meditation, chapter 5. This is the situation that our people find ourselves in at this present time. Lamentations 5 and 7. Lamentations, matter of fact, make it 5. Lamentations 5 and 5. Lamentations 5 and 5. Y'all all right this evening? It's still day. It's still daylight around our way. Lord will will be done for the sun go down. I didn't keep y'all too long this evening. He said our necks are under persecution. We labor and have no rest. That's where our people find ourselves at right now. This is why you see your brothers and sisters in Baltimore acting a monkey fool. You know what I'm saying? We definitely don't condone the activity. You know what I'm saying? But you got to have enough wisdom in your mind and in your heart to understand why these people would be snapping when you say. You know what I'm saying? You can't put your neck up on you can't do it, people, the way you've been doing them for a certain period of time and you don't think that they gonna snap. You got some niggas that really even think this is a god what's going on in Baltimore. You got niggas amped up because bloods and crips are united with nation of Islam. Yeah, y'all's really with that. But you see the key thing that he said, we don't have any rest, we labor, and we don't have any rest. Now we know the Lord say, come unto me, all ye that labor, and I will give you rest. Because you know how your neck was under persecution. So you know if you get persecuted, that means you being oppressed, right? Well, let's go on and look at it. We ain't got to go read Hebrews 2 and 14, because y'all know what it says. What did it say? What did he reach out to tell you that Yahshua came to do? Did he tell you that he came to deliver you from the bondage of death and all those who were oppressed by it? By destroying him that had power over death, that is the devil. See, now, we have to sit back. We have to have natural eyes and you got to have spiritual eyes. We looking at Lamentation 5 and 5 and we seeing that our necks were under persecution and we labored and had no rest because of sin. We were oppressed by the working of sin. But now let's look at it on a natural level. These people have been oppressing us. You know what I'm talking about? Continually and habitually. If we sat down and ran down the names of all the people who had been killed by the police, just in major U.S. cities, we'd be here all night. You know what I'm saying? I told y'all before, I have a dude who I knew personally was friends with his cousin. I'm talking about his cousin with my best friend. I went to school with this man. We in the same graduating class. You know what I'm talking about? Police killed this man while I was in prison in 2007. Beat him to death. I ain't talking about shot him. Beat him to death with their hands and their feet. To the point where this man's face was so unrecognizable, there was no one in the world they could even have a weight, much less an open character for. You know what I'm saying? Now we done went over some of this stuff before. Come on around here to Luke chapter 18. But I guess we got to reiterate it of what's going on right now. Can y'all imagine that somebody beating somebody so bad they face unrecognizable? The only thing coming to my mind right now is the face of Emmett Till because they opened that casket up so you can see what it looked like, what they did to him. 18 and 1, Luke 18. Luke 18 and 1. And he spake a parable unto them to this end that men are always to pray and not to faint. See, you know what ends up happening, like I told y'all last week with a brother that say, this mythical white man coming down from the sky. See, a lot of people don't actually want to, they get tired of praying because they say it ain't working. You know what I'm saying? But you don't realize, why is their prayers not working, y'all? Why? Because they sin us, they disobedient to the word. See, there's no way we gonna hear these people. See, hold on. He told you to always pray and not to faint, right? So let's look at something. First and foremost, let's go look at 2 Chronicles 7 and 14. And after we look at 2 Chronicles 7 and 14, then we can look at well, let's look at 2 Chronicles chapter 6. Ain't no need for us to go to 1 Kings chapter 8 to read the same thing. And it's right here. And then we'll read 2 Chronicles 7 and 14. And then we'll go look at 1 Thessalonians 5. That's our son you got to sit back and look at. The women, the women know, if your head not covered throughout the day, ain't no way you could be praying. You know what I'm saying? Just like a man know, if I got a hat on my head all day, ain't no way I can be praying. Some of y'all don't be with me. I go to talking to you about the word. I got a hat on you. Be like, boy, I need to smoothly remove that from his head. You know what I'm talking about? Because if you want to sit back and talk to the Lord, you have to follow a certain protocol. 
Because this we're gonna read what I'm talking about. I don't know. First second chronicle chapter six verse thirty seven. Or thirty six even better. If they sin against thee, for there is no man will sin not, and thou be angry with them, and deliver them over there before their enemies. And they carry them away captives unto a land far off or near. Yet if they bethink themselves in a land where they are carried captive, and turn and pray unto thee in the land of their captivity, saying, We have sinned, we have done amiss, and have dealt wickedly. See, this is what our people haven't done, this is what we don't want to do, because it will cause us to have to actually look at our behavior. And they return to thee with all of their heart and with all of their soul in the land of their captivity. You know what this man say? If they return to thee with all of their heart and with all of their soul in the land of their captivity, whether they have carried them captives and prayed towards their land which thou gave unto their fathers and towards the city which thou hast chosen and towards the house which I have built for thy name, then hear thou from heavens, from the heavens, even from thy dwelling place, their prayer and their supplications and maintain their cause and forgive thy people which have sinned against thee. Now, my God, let I beseech thee, thy eyes be open, and let thy ears be attent unto the prayer that is made in this place. So what y'all think that could be referred to about why that prayer would be able to get in? Because this man told you to always pray and not to faint. That means that man told you before you fall out, he said, make supplication unto me. Now this man just said, if you return back with all your heart and with all your mind and with all your soul to hear from heaven and attend unto that prayer. Because this man just told you, you're never been under persecution. You've been laboring, but you ain't got no rest. You've been laboring, but you ain't got no rest. This man said, attend unto that prayer, to the house which you've chosen. Where you placed your name at. Y'all should know what this is. Let's go on here and see. Come on to John chapter 15. Y'all should know. Didn't John, and then the Bible we read in the first epistle? The first epistle of John in the third chapter, about the 21st verse. What will happen if you obey? This man will hear you because you do the things that please it. But what's going on? You know what I'm saying? Meaning you're turning your sin away. You're hearing your heart. Because these people, I'm, I'm going to tell you something. We dwell in a wicked, God forsaken place. Y'all do know that, right? We dwell in a wicked, God forsaken place, a land ran by hypocrites. You know, we went through this before, I think it was during the Trayvon Mall of Mike Brown. The video is called Seek Not Judgment from Your Oppressor. We cannot sit back and seek judgment and mercy from hypocrites and sinners. Y'all didn't know that? We can't do that. That's retarded. These people are never going to give you the judgment and mercy that you see. See, I seen a little brother, he's talking about they're going to hear us. See, we more intent on a man hearing us than our God hearing us. You know what I'm saying? See, if our behavior is transformed, then our God will attend unto our prayers. And then guess what he would do? He move on your behalf. You think this man gonna move on your behalf because you don't need no poor talk or because you don't use it? We gotta be better than that. Let me see what it is, John 15, y'all. John 15 is here. Make it five. After that, first Thessalonians chapter five. I am the vine, ye are the branches. He that abide in me, and I in him, the same bring forth much fruit, for without me you can do nothing. You wonder why people can't accomplish nothing. Because we seek to do it without him. I'm gonna, it ain't got to be nothing great. You know what I'm saying? It could be something small. Everything that we do, we ought to be doing it by Him. See, we can't do nothing without Him. I couldn't be doing what I'm doing without Him. Yo, don't y'all know, if this man told me to sit down tomorrow, I would have no choice but to sit down. Y'all don't realize that though. See, some of y'all are going to tell you not to do something, or do something, and you're not going to do what He told you to do. You know what I'm saying? My sister noticed here, there was a period where like, I said, man, I ain't doing this no more. You know what I'm talking about? Man said, no, go on and do it. 
Because he don't have to let it be known. My sister had asked me a question the other day. She said, if you had the opportunity to get a building, would you get it? I said, if the Lord told me not to get it, I wouldn't do it. Some of y'all be like, well, we got the building, why you ain't going to get it? Because the man said, don't do it. You know what I'm saying? I ain't just going to go because I want to do it. You know what I'm saying? He's like, you know what? I want you to do that. Don't y'all know before I actually told y'all that we would do this on Wednesdays and this was in my mind for about a month and a half before I actually did it? And you know why I actually did it? Because he said, go ahead and do it. Go ahead and do it. You know what I'm saying? Just because something comes in your mind to do something, don't always mean you just got the trouble. You know what I'm saying? Sometimes you'll sit back and look at it, they'll be like, you know what, let me inquire the man of God, or let me just wait. You know what I'm saying? See, some of y'all don't have no patience, and that's coming from, you come from this, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? I always say it, but it's instant gratification. That's the, that's the same way, because that's instant gratification right there. Microwave society, I want it quick. You know what I'm saying? But I'm telling you something, man. Living in this country, and, and, and as Man, if you don't learn that much, uh, as a black man, you, you don't have no choice but to learn pace. I'm going to tell you, man, I'm talking about at least speaking for me. And all of it ain't got necessarily to do with no criminal record whatsoever. Well, you know, I have had difficult times obtaining jobs my entire life. I mean, I was 15 years old, Tom Dixon, so you got to go work at Win Dixon. Did you not know I used to go down this place like every, almost every other day? For months? Before we keep... Before the people hired me, you know they actually hired me a week before my 16th birthday. I actually didn't start working till I turned six. I didn't start working till my 16th birthday. My first day at work was on my birthday. You know what I'm saying? My mama told me I had to have a job to buy school clothes. Not because I just wanted to go get a job to buy school clothes. She didn't have the money to do it. But I didn't care. Then you know I didn't get the job that I got at KLC till a month after school started. Me, I've been looking for the job since June. It took three months. But you, you know what I'm talking about? It didn't just be like that. Sometimes, you know, the man tell you time to change happen to everybody. You know what I'm talking about? Sometimes you can do stuff for some person. One person is like that. Another person take longer. But I'm talking about as a black man, you got to have something. If you don't go that way, tell my homeboy, tell my mate, we're talking about something yesterday. He said, man, I got to do something. I'm tired of working for these people. You know what I'm talking about? And it's like this here. Lord, here, I get closer to my objective than though uh, becoming a trainer. Because I actually, the brother remember, I actually went to looking into doing it a year at, before I actually was able to do it. Like I knew how much it was going to cost me. I was looking at all this stuff because I'm like, first chance I get, I'm going to move on it. That's the same thing happened when I got ready to go to real estate school. I had actually looked into it a year before I actually did it. So I knew what it was going to cost me, what I was going to need to do, what information, all that like that. So when the opportunity presented itself, I would already be ready. You know what I'm talking about? Because sometimes you just got to be patient. I mean, shoot, I would much rather have been able to keep in gear a long time before that. You know what I'm talking about? But Lord will in two weeks, it'll be done. You know what I'm saying? Lord will in two weeks, it'll be done. Let's read verse 6, though. And if a man abide not in me, he cast forth as a branch and is withered. Men gathered and they cast them into the fire and they are burned. If you abide in me and my words abide in you, you shall ask what you will, and it shall be done unto you. Here is my Father glorified that you bear much fruit, so you shall be my disciples. Because y'all remember now, what does Hebrews teach us? Well, let's look at Hebrews chapter 7. Y'all should know what Hebrews teach us. Y'all should know what Hebrews chapter 7 teaches you. Right here in verse 26. Well, 25. Because this man just prayed that you would attend unto the prayer that's made in this place. The man said, just abide in me, and I in you. And if my words abide in you, and I abide in you, you will ask what you will, and it will be done unto you. Then we'll read First Thessalonians 5. He said, Wherefore he is able also to save them to the uttermost that come unto God by him, seeing he ever lived to make intercession for them. For such a high priest become us who is Kodesh, harmless, undefiled, separate from sinners, and made higher than the heavens. Because he said to this house, the prayer that's made towards this house. 
we just dealt with not too long ago how this man was the house of Exodus chapter 25. When the prayer is made unto this house and you actually come back with your whole heart, your whole mind, and your whole soul, and you repent and you convert, this man will hear you. First Thessalonians 5. Well, let's look at 2 Chronicles chapter 7. Matter of fact, come on back over here to 2 Chronicles chapter 6. Then we'll get to 7. And we also want John chapter 4 by verse 20. We still hold a little 18. We read verse 39 one more time. He says, and hear thou from the heaven. Because he just told you you got a high priest high in the heavens to make intercession for you. Hear thou from the heavens, even from thy dwelling place, thy prayer and thy supplication, and maintain their cause, and forgive thy people which have sinned against thee. Now, my God, let I beseech thee, thine eyes be open, and let thy ears be intent unto the prayer that is made in this place. Now, therefore, arise, O Yah, to thy resting place. Thou in the ark of thy strength. Let thy priests, O Yah, be clothed with salvation, and let thy saints rejoice in goodness. O Yah, turn not away the face of thine anointed. Remember the mercies of David thy servant. Now let's sit back and look at this when he say, Remember the mercies of David thy servant. Who remembers what the mercy of David his servant is? Who remembers what that is? Maybe he told you that in Isaiah 55, I'll give you the soul mercies of David. David pronounced death on himself, and God said, I'll put your sin away. You will not die. See, come on around here to Hebrew chapter 10, about verse 22. I'll put your sin away, and you will not die. Hebrew 10 and 22. Now he didn't give no sure mercy because he told him he was going to die. Let's hear what happened. But, yeah. But, you know, he was already ordained for death. Even before he did that, he just sped up the process. But when Sa when, 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 when Nathan came in there and, and told David that, David said, that man there going to die. And he said, that man is you. And you know, when the king gave a decree, that law, that can't be reversed. We learned that from Esther the first chapter. Hebrew 10, think about, think about 7, 19. Matter of fact, look at 15. Where are the Ruach Kakodesh also is witness to us? Matter of fact, that about the verse 1. We work our way down. Matter of fact, look at Hebrew chapter 9 and verse 1. And then we'll slide on over. He said, truly, the first covenant had also ordinances of divine service and a worldly sanctuary. That's what Solomon was building. That's what you actually read about it on the natural. For there was a tabernacle made, the first one was the candlestick and the table and the shoe bread, which is called the sanctuary. And after the second veil, the tabernacle, which is called the Kodesh of all, which had the golden censer and the ark of the covenant overlaid round about with gold, where was the golden pot that had manna, and Aaron's rod that buddy, and the tables of the covenant. Now, now some of y'all don't remember this here. You sit back, we done went over some of this stuff before. We done talked a little bit how Yahshua is the ark of the covenant. Lord, we'll, we'll come into that in a greater detail another time. You know that he's the manna that come down from heaven. But some of y'all don't remember when we looked at Aaron's rod that buddy in number 17. And my memory served me correctly. But any of y'all remember that? And you remember they say Aaron's rod that bird, he say take that one up, meaning the rod that bird brought forth fruit. You know what I'm saying? And you don't already know from John 15, he said, if you abide in me and I and you, then you'll bring forth more fruit, therefore you will be my disciple. Meaning Yahshua again is that rod that bird, showing you that he is the house of everything that was contained in the house. So if you abide in him, then you would hear your prayer and maintain your cause like Solomon asked him for those short mercies of his servant David. And then he said, now, and over it, the cherubims of glory shadowing the mercy seat. He said, of which we cannot now speak particularly. Now when these things were thus ordained, the priest went always into the first tabernacle, accomplishing the service of God. But the second went the high priest alone once every year, not without blood, which he offered for himself and for the errors of the people. The Ruach Kodesh, 
this signifying that the way into the Kodesh of all was not yet made manifest, while as the first tabernacle was yet standing which was a figure for the time then present and which offered both gifts and sacrifices that could not make him that did the service perfect as pertaining to the conscience, which stood only in meats and drinks and diverse washings and cardinal ordinances opposed on them until the time of reformation. But the Messiah becoming the high priest of good things to come by a greater and more perfect tabernacle not made with hands, that is to say, not of this building. So now you just sat back and you just heard this man say the first went in that the, the priest accomplished the service, but the second was the high priest that went in the most set apart place, because he was telling you the way into the most set apart were all hadn't yet been made manifest. Now all of us, by his prayer, John 17, about us being made perfect in one, right? Now we can actually enter into that most codex place. Enter into the Son. Enter into the Kodesh of Kodesh with what's mean with what? He would be able to maintain our cause then too, wouldn't he? And you know he talked about the Day of Atonement when he brought the blood in. Therefore, your sin will be forgiven. Because he said, hit out from heaven and forgive their sin and maintain their cause because they sinned against thee. So when you actually come under the blood of this man and enter into him and he dwell in you and you dwell in him, he said, guess what happens? Your sins can be forgiven. And then the Lord will hear your prayer and move on your behalf. What our brothers be telling to forgive you, as long as the people are dwelling in righteousness, un unrighteousness, I should say, he will not move on your behalf. The man is a man of his word. But I think people tend to forget that. Let's keep on rolling here. Let's go over here back to chapter 10. Because you heard what he just mentioned to you that uh, this could be made manifest while the first tabernacle was yet standing could make you perfect. There was nothing about that literal temple that could make your mind perfect towards God. There was nothing about it that could turn your mind away from sin. And we know God don't hear prayers of sinners. So that means I got to set something up. He said he has a worshiper of God and do his will. I hear him. Chapter 10 of the book of Epistle of Hebrews. Make it verse 10. He says, By the which will we are sanctified through the offering of the body of God through the Messiah once for all. And every priest stand daily ministering, offering oftentimes the same sacrifices which can never take away sins. But this man, after he offered one sacrifice for sins forever, sat down on the right hand of God. From henceforth expect until his enemies be made his footstool. For by one offering he hath perfected for them forever them that are sanctified. Well, whereof the Ruach HaKodesh also was a witness to us. For after that he had said before, This is the covenant that I will make with them after those days, saith Yah. I will put my laws into their hearts, and in their minds will I write them, and their sins and iniquities I will remember no more. Then he said, he, he said, forgive his people if they return unto him with their whole heart and their whole soul. To you to come back to the Son, you're going to have to come back with your whole heart and your whole soul, every ounce of your being. You know what I'm saying? Every ounce of your being, every ounce of your mind, it has to come a point in time where the word begin to cause a transformation in your thought process. See, you thinking, you thinking the transformation done came because of certain stuff you may or may not do. But I'm talking about your whole thought process changes. I will tell you, I don't think the same at all. I'm going to sit here and tell you, my mind frame ain't nowhere near the same as what it was just a sh six short years since I've been out of prison. Because it's still April. The first of this month made six years exactly I've been out of prison. You know what I'm saying? I'm talking about, y'all don't even know I had no idea of the type of stuff that I done had to do. Deal with this here, man. I done came close by three, four times had to live on the street and was ready to do it and didn't complain about it to say a word. My sister can bear witness. The Lord didn't allow that to happen. I was willing to take it, though. I wouldn't ask nobody, can I sleep here or sleep there? You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? I'm just being for real. Because I knew one thing, one place I wasn't going to sleep at. Well, two places. That's anywhere in the Florida Department of Corrections and at the John E. Goods 
detention center, but at home as a group all kind of jail. I wasn't finna sleep at neither one of them, because I wasn't finna do nothing to go. I said, well, if I gotta live on the street, then I'll live on the street then. In these days, I ain't late. I know you go to my cousin's house. My cousin be like, what about the kids? You know what I'm talking about? Later I told her, I just wasn't eating right. You know what I'm saying? I was eating, but I wasn't eating really enough. You know what I'm saying? To sustain, I ain't finna ask nobody for nothing. But that was before the world. My sister was saying, well, nigga ain't gonna ask us, they really ain't got no choice, they just got to go ahead and do it. You know what I'm saying? Because we were just ready just to go without it. You know what I'm saying? I know some of y'all ain't never been in that situation or circumstance or position to know, to have a mind to be like, I just got to go without it. You know what I'm saying? It gives you some resolve, though. I know some of y'all would be like, you see, you always had people to fall back on. Like, we didn't have nobody to fall back on. You know what I'm talking about? I know I did. I was telling my own boy yesterday. I was telling him yesterday. Was that yesterday? That was yesterday. Like, you know, a lot of dudes end up, you know why a lot of dudes end up going back to selling dope or doing the stuff they were doing to go to prison? Some of them because that's what they want to do. But see, some people, because he was saying, like, he shouldn't need somebody to motivate him to work out, but I because he'll call me to see if I'm in the gym and come. Because he know if I'm in there, I got to get in here, go ahead and do it. I say sometimes people need that because it's prison numbers. You know what I'm talking about? But you look at a lot of dudes get out of jail or prison, they don't have a support system. I ain't talking about people taking care of them. You know what I'm saying? Buying their clothes, putting money in their pocket every day. Just somebody be able to say, hey, you need some money to catch the bus and go to such and such. Somebody can take them somewhere. If they ain't got that, if they got that, they know they got people behind them, that can give them the strength to keep on pushing. But a nigga just be like, oh, you just out here, nigga, floating the wind. Everybody's not that strong. I ain't gonna tell you no lie. If it wasn't for the word, I probably would have went back to selling dope a long time ago. Ain't but so long somebody gonna be broke and they used to doing for themselves. So y'all don't know that door. You don't know talk about that. Like if it wasn't for the word, man, because man, that's what made me start selling dope again to catch the case that I thought would send me to prison. When I stopped selling dope to get my real estate license and I done went nine months looking for a job, ain't found none. The little ten thousand dollars that I had when I stopped hustling, that's gone. You know what I'm saying? How long ten thousand dollars gonna last? It ain't gonna last long. You know what I'm saying? Then what? What you gonna do? People go to size of you and try you, and you be like, shoot. If I ain't no more, I know how to cook me cocaine. I know how to get out these rocks. That don't mean necessarily what you wanna do, but it be that question. See, sometimes you got to do say, you know what? I'm just not gonna do it. I'm just not gonna do it. See, a lot of people don't know that pressure, man, of being broke and hearing people in here, you just be like, screw it. And it always start like this here. If I just make this a little bit right here, then I'm going to stop. But it don't never work that way. When I first started hustling, man, I'm like, okay, mom boots need a little, need the help. Because she can't pay all by herself. by herself. I done lost my job. I said, then what I'm going to do? Well, I was working at Dairy Queen. And that wasn't me. That wasn't me. I knew what Matter of fact, that Dairy Queen don't even no longer exist. It's a car wash in this place. If my memory served me correctly down there on the land of D. I'm like, okay, I'm going to still go look for a job. This just going to pay the bill while I'm doing it. But once you go to make it a little bit more money, and a little bit more money, and you get caught up in, in the business of hustling itself, man, you don't stop. Oh, I know it's because uh, it's the same thing. You don't stop. That's what I was explaining to uh, my old lady one day when I was talking about a girl that I knew who used to prostitute. For some girls that I knew that used to prostitute, that was the same to them as selling Christ. It just was their body. You know what I'm talking about? Same with strippers, it just was their body. That was their hustle. And a lot of them, them girls, and most of them girls, they don't even want to do that junk, man. Most niggas who sell and dope, they don't want to do that. But man, you get caught up having to make that money, and you, you start making that money, and your life start to get consumed with it, and you, you, your thought process, oh, I'm going to still go look for a job and do this, it don't happen. It don't be that you don't might necessarily don't want to work. You get consumed. I'm telling you, man. I'm telling you, man. Me and my homegirls. Man, I'm telling you, one day, man, my homegirl, man, we were sitting down, man, she looked at me, man, she said, you changing. I said, yeah, I'm a little bit more money-oriented. And she looked at me and she said, I know. And I could see by the look in her eye, it 
it wasn't the fact that you was about getting your money. She was like, you doing something that that's not actually you. You ain't got no business doing this. I'm scared this lifestyle you ain't gonna corrupt your kid. I can see the fear in her eyes that she had for me that I might not be the same person dealing with this. I never forgot it to this day, man. That was almost 14 years ago. I still ain't forgot it. I still ain't forgot it. Cause that's, that, that was something that clicked in the back of my mind. This also let me know this is somebody who actually care about your well-being. Cause this nigga don't care nothing about the money you making. She's not impressed by none of that. She's sitting back looking at this can't corrupt you. Sometimes it ain't got to be selling drugs or nothing illegal. Sometimes you got to look at the stuff you involved with and the people you involved with and the things you involved with and ask yourself, is it going to corrupt your mind? The way it could get you out of character. What could get you outside of what you should be doing? It can be real simple. It just got to be illegal stuff now. Y'all follow me? Come on down here, look at this here now. By verse 20. By verse 19. Listen to what he said now. Because he said that the heathen, when you come into this set of power play, they got what's out of the play for. Look what he told you. Having therefore, brethren, boldness to enter into the Kodesh by the blood of Yahshua, by a new and living way which he has consecrated for us through the veil that is to say his flesh and having a high priest over the house of God let us draw near with the true heart and full assurance of faith having our heart sprinkled from the evil conscience and our bodies washed with pure water that's what we gotta sit back and look at is to be cleansed completely to dwell in this house because he said here this house where you place your name at and turn unto their cry the only way he gonna be able, he gonna be able to turn them turn unto your cry you gonna have to come to that house and when you come to that house you gonna have to come correct come on look at first Thessalonians chapter 5 we still holding Luke 18 I hope the sound on you know this stuff crazy out here on these streets it's real crazy it's real crazy. And it's more crazy when it ain't just what these white folks doing to us. It ain't just what the police doing to us. Just period. You know, these little jets out here killing each other left and right. They ain't got no, they have no regard for life whatsoever. They don't even care about their own life. So you got to know they don't care about nobody else. It's 5 or 17. Make it 16. Because I'm going to tell you something. Then we just read in 2 Chronicles chapter 6. He said, for his priest to rejoice. Ain't that what he said? Look at verse 16. Rejoice evermore. That's what y'all need to start doing. Rejoicing in the Lord. Rejoice evermore. Pray without ceasing. Oh boy. He said pray without ceasing. And everything gives thanks. For this is the will of God and the Messiah Yahshua concerning you. Quench not the spirit. Despise not prophesying. Prove all things. Hold fast that which is good. Abstain from all appearance of evil, and the very God of peace sanctify you holy. And I pray, God, your whole spirit and soul and body be preserved blameless until the coming of our Lord Yahshua the Messiah. Faithful is he that call you, who also will do it. Because Solomon made that prayer for them to tend unto that cry that's made in that heart. You've got to believe that this man going to do what he said. you got to believe this here. We have to believe this here. So you do want to tell you, go ahead and ride and tear stuff up. That's not a God. Where can you read anywhere in this book where our ancestors was in captivity and they were dead? Don't worry, I'll read. Just sit, just sit back. Anybody, can anybody give me a chapter and a verse? Or where, just give me one where y'all told them to do. So these are people who really set men up to be killed. You know, when I actually told that dude, I said, man, you got to be careful telling these people to go out here and do this. Because if these people's soul ain't right, these people are going to lift their eyes up in hell. And this nigga said, we already in hell. No, we not in hell yet, brother. No, you in captivity. See, come on, do the Roman chapter 28. And then after that, we're looking in Jeremiah chapter 2. I'll show you. The man that told you what was going to happen to you. Now we got to know how to carry ourselves while we're here. This ain't the first time we've been here to talk about this. But we'll do it again. Deuteronomy chapter 28. Let's see the verse that I want. Give me about 25. Y'all shall cause thee to be submitted before thy enemies. Thou shalt go out one way against them and flee seven ways before them. And thou shalt be removed unto all the kingdoms of the earth. And thy carcass shall be meat unto all the fowls of the air, and unto the beasts of the earth, and no man shall fray them away. 
and y'all will smite me with the box of Egypt and with the emeralds and with the scab and with the itch whereof thou cannot be healed. Y'all shall smite me with madness and blindness and astonishment of heart. You sit back and you hear, that, hear these people when our people be screaming and hollering about it. They're astonished. What's the first thing you hear people say? They can't do it like this. They be astonished. These people been hanging. Niggas act like it's just, it's just amazing to me. The police been killing niggas. Before they killed niggas, they hung you from trees. They sit dogs on you. They sprayed you with water hoses. They did all types of stuff. They use your babies as alligator bait, and you still astonished. You still amazed at what you see. And you think this man would lie? Our people going mad. This go mad means go crazy. What you think they had to do? Is going crazy? They going crazy. The man told you he'll do it. Then he say, and thou shalt grow at noon days, at the blind grow in darkness, thou shalt not prosper in thy ways, and thou shalt only be, be only oppressed and spoiled evermore, and no man shall save thee. You're not going to be able to change. The only way you're going to be able to change is because you don't believe what the man said. So the man done told you, you're going to be spoiled and oppressed. But he said he would call these people to have compassion on you and the place where you've been taken captive if you return to him. See, so you want to seek to take them down and then try to put that on him. And he's sitting back looking at, I don't stamp none of that. I ain't told you to go do that. I don't know why you went and did that. Jeremiah chapter 2, I ain't put my stamp on that. And you don't need to go back and forth with it. That's why you didn't see me say nothing publicly about it other than last like, night. No. For what? I'm not going to be going back and forth with you dudes about this. 2 and 11. It don't make no sense to. Because they're going to go on here. You go on here and run up. And you're going to get them more. And you're going to go. You gonna get yourself here. You're going to hell. Every nigga who follows you going. These people who actually don't care nothing about y'all. That's why they tell you, go ahead and rise up. Rise up. You're going to rise up, nigga. These people can stop ammo, ammo supply. What you going to do? What you going to do? These are the same niggas that say these people put the guns and dope on the street. And you going to try to go to war with them. And you got to get your, you got to get your ass whooped by the nigga that said they going to go to war with them. And you got to get your ass whooped by the nigga that said they going to go to war with You ain't got no drones. These people got drones. They got tent. Do you know these? Now you gotta sit back and look at what type of man you're dealing with. You're dealing with a man. You're dealing with a man who dropped an atomic bomb on two cities, on two civilian cities, and you wouldn't think that he would drop one on you niggas to get rid of you. You don't think he would do it? These people lead, these people stand up and lead you straight to the floor. But guess what though? The book, the book, but the book already told you you were going to run away from these people and you'll catch up. But you gotta sit back and look at it though. We don't want to deal with that. You're not going to beat these people in no military conflict. The man said you don't have no power to stand before your enemies. Did you think he would lie? They can read it. They just don't want to believe it. Look at... Let's look at 2 and... Let's look at 2 and 11. Do we love? He said, have the nation changed their gods, which are yet no gods? But my people have changed their glory for that which do not profit. Be astonished, O you heavens, at this, and be horribly, horribly afraid. Be ye very desolate, saith Yah. For my people have committed two evils. They have forsaken me the fire of living water, and you them my cisterns and broken cisterns that can hold no water. Is Israel a servant? Is he a home-born slave? Why is he spoiled? So why is you a slave? And why do these people take everything from you? They take your money, they take your lives, they take your husbands, they take your children. 
They take your property? No! John chapter 4, verse 20. That's why. You why? Because you steadily disobey. You don't actually believe what this man say. That ain't going to Come on, man. We know the fool. We have the but nobody ain't enjoying what these people are doing to it. But this man said, if you can confess the iniquities of you and your forefathers and accept your punishment. See, these people don't want to accept their punishment. You know what I'm saying? Brothers be quick to scream, oh man, y'all want to live in the curse. We ain't living in the curse. I see the dude say, well, if you obey and the curse is reversed, the curse may come off you individually, the curse of death, but you being spoiled and oppressed ain't never going to stop. You having to go to your enemies and hunger and nakedness and the one of all things, that ain't never going to stop. That man say we are a mix of under persecution, we labor and we have no rest. Now we know looking at it on the spiritual level, he talking about sin is persecuting you. And you working and you ain't got no rest, you're going to have to come to the sun. But looking at it on a natural level, we are being persecuted day and night by these people. And you working and you working and you working and you ain't got no rest. And you're not going to get none. Why you don't suck? Why you don't seek your God? You ain't never going to get it. Ain't no wife, ain't no house, ain't no car, ain't no job gonna get you the rest that you see. Ain't no riots, ain't no protesting gonna get you the rest that you see. You know what I'm saying? It's not gonna get you there. That man said, there will remain a rest unto the people of God. He said, therefore, let us labor after that example and cease from our own words like we, like we did like God did for me. Do you know we can actually sit back and look at, and I, and I knew a dude, we used to talk about it all the time. We in John chapter 4 verse 20. About how people feel like you ain't got to do no work to be saved. Like there is a labor. You notice you always hear, read the word labor, especially in Paul's epistles, about the work that has to be done to enter into this set of God place. To enter into God's rest. There's a work you got to do. You got to put in that word. That's why he said we laboring, but we ain't getting nowhere. The whole time we've been laboring is because we've been doing what we wanted to do. You know what I'm saying? And that's why now we under persecution. That's why we working and we can't, that's why these people got rule over us. Four and twenty. John four and twenty. Our fathers worship in this mountain, and ye say that in Jerusalem is the place where men ought to worship. Yahshua said unto her, Woman, believe me, the hour will come when you shall neither in this mountain nor yet at Jerusalem worship the Father. We done already read that. Solomon prayed for it. The second chapter chapter 6, did he not? He wasn't never, but he's seen already in Hebrew chapter 10. It wasn't about no, no worldly tabernacle. It was about a tabernacle that was made without hands. That's that's why the man sat back and told us why these stupid niggas talking about you can't keep the feast in captivity, you dumb nigga. It wasn't all about that house. It was about you who the house was patterned after. Before Solomon ever built that house, it had already been laid out in heaven how to make it. It's my son. He said, but the hour will come. He said, uh, you worship, you know not what. We know what we worship, for salvation is of the Jews. That's why these niggas, they don't know what they worship. You're supposed to know. You say you're a Jew, you're supposed to know. You're supposed to know. I ain't going to fight behind this stuff. I'm going to just put it in my car. That's what he told me to do. He told me to stand fast. Hold on. Something came to my mind. We're going to get Hold on. We say we're going to read 2 Chronicles chapter 7, verse 14. We also hold in Luke chapter 18, verse 1. But we're going to go to Jeremiah chapter 29, verse 11 when I finish with this John chapter 4. He says, But the hour will come, and now is when the true worshiper shall worship the Father in spirit and in truth. For the Father seeks such to worship him. God is a spirit, and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. If you worship God in spirit and truth, then what would that be? What's going to be the process of that? What's going to happen? We didn't already mention it. I'm going to see who can catch it. If you worship God and spirit and truth, then God would dwell in you and you would dwell in him, which means you would have entered into the cold dead place, which means he would untip, he would attend unto your crop. That means you would have returned unto him with the whole heart and the whole soul. 
And we will turn around and show upon you the mercies of David by forgiving your sin. That's why the people can't get here. That's why the sins can't be forgiven because they haven't came back. Jeremiah 29 and 11. 29 to 7. Maybe 29 and 4. I just want to read to you what this man said because our people already done done this. Our time here about up. Thus said God most the God of Israel unto all that carried, that are carried away captives, whom I have called to be carried away captive from Jerusalem to Babylon. Build ye houses and dwell in them. Plant gardens and eat the fruit of them. Take ye wives and beget sons and daughters. Take wives for your sons. Give your daughters to, to husbands, that they may bear sons and daughters, that you may be increased there and not diminished. And seek the peace of the city where God calls you to be carried away captive, and pray unto Yah for it. For in the peace thereof you shall have peace. Hold what you got, look at First Peter chapter 2. He said, Pray for the peace where you've been captive of. He said, If you pray for the peace of it, you'll have peace. First Peter chapter 2, about verse 20. I'm sorry, about verse 6, uh, 13. Make it 11. He said, having your behavior honest among the Gentiles, that whereas they speak against you as evildoers, that they may by your good works what they shall behold, glorify God in the day of the visitation. So you sit back and look at it. These brothers up there mad and understanding this song. But all these people been getting on the news, been able to do, you've been allowing these people to speak evil of your words. That's why he just told you, Dearly beloved, what well, we can read verse 11. Dearly beloved, I beseech you as strangers and pilgrims, abstain from fleshly lust which war against the soul. Now we strangers and pilgrims in this place. We're supposed to be abstaining from that because if our behavior is honest amongst these people, when they call us evil, they're going to have to glorify God when he visits. That's why I sit back and tell you, if you live right and do right, you are testimony against these people. You know what I'm talking about? See, a living testimony. A living testimony. That means you ain't just supposed to be like the shoe. I'm going to act any kind of way today, or I ain't going to, I'm going to go out and put, I ain't going to go to work with my head covered. I, want, I don't want the people to say nothing to me. You know what I'm saying? Less than people directly tell you you can't do it. You know what I'm talking about? You told them, that's a testimony against them people. Every time you walk around, walk around so many people with no makeup on, no weed, no jewelry, no all here, that's a testimony against them people. Don't you know every time you brothers act up right, somebody do you wrong and you show peace unto them, and you forgive them and you give show mercy, that's a testimony against them people. Every time you don't come to work on the Sabbath, that's a testimony against them people. Every time you say, no, I can't come to work this week, man, I'm good, I ain't coming, that's a testimony against them people. No, I don't eat no swine. No, I don't tell no lies. Like I said, man, my brother had me go off on the eBay dude, man. He done mess around and, 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 and open up the pack with the, with the cologne in. I didn't even realize it was open. I done told him, nigga, you done suck me a bottle of water. I said, look here, man. I'm going to call the people on you. Brother, like this here. Oh, you did that. You did. I'm talking about, I done took pictures of the package and all. That's how serious it was. I said it to him. You know what I'm talking about? Cause I didn't even sit back there this nigga playing. He didn't even enter into my mind. When it done came to my attention, he was playing, I really told him, hey, man, my deepest and sincere apologies, man. My brother-in-law was playing, my mother and my sister I didn't even realize he had opened it. If I would have known that, I wouldn't even came at you like that. Oh, you, you're just lying. You just gave me feedback. You couldn't even come up with a good lie. All I had to tell him was this here. Man, I feel God of heaven and earth, man, whose name is y'all. I ain't got no time to tell you what you buy no bottle of cologne, try to gain you out no bottle of cologne, brother. I say, well, God know what the truth is. And I'm going to end it at that. I don't care what you think. Could you think I would be going back from four for two with an eBay message by $45 fucking dollars? $45? A bottle of this in the yard, you think I'm going to be going back and forth with you about that? You know what I'm saying? I, I'm like this here. I'll probably, I'll let you know I was wrong. 
I didn't have no problem doing it. I'm talking about as soon as I knew, knew the case, I let you know, hey, my bad. My bad for insulting your integrity. And I put all that in. I ain't even to insult your integrity or none of that. I didn't know they were playing. Oh, you need to find somebody to play with. You're, gonna, you're a person of no moral character. You're a horrible person. Don't contact me. I don't want y'all that crap, nigga. Why would I play with you about that? What day am I getting out of that? Oh, you stupid bastard. I gave you the positive feedback after I apologized to you. Not before. After. Shoot, if I knew I was reporting to Ebo, I would have did that immediately. I'm going to let him know what type of stuff he done did. But it's hot. You know what I'm saying? Hey, man, I didn't want to do it, though. First thing to do, but don't. Well, I'll tell you about it later. I can't go back over. Listen to what I tell you now. Submit yourselves under every ordinance of man for the Lord's sake, whether it be to the king as supreme, or unto governors as unto them that are sent by him for the punishment of evildoers, and for the praise of them that do well. For so is the will of God that with well doing you may put to silence the ignorance of foolish men, as free, not using your liberty for a cloak of maliciousness, but as the servants of God. On all men, Love the brotherhood, fear God, honor the king. Because when he tell you, he said, don't use your freedom that you got in the Lord to you that to be malicious. He told you not to do that. In order to put the silence in your men, you got to live like I'm just going to shut their mouth. See, a lot of dudes think it's weakness and not rebellion. But we know what Paul told us in 2 Corinthians, but what the Lord told Paul in 2 Corinthians chapter 12, See, my grace is sufficient for thee. My strength is made perfect in weakness. See, brothers don't want the strength that comes from God because they're going to have to come down to a humble state. You know what I'm saying? You're going to have to come down to a low state. Even when Paul was unrighteously accused by his own people, he didn't do nothing. He didn't rebel. Let's go to war with the Romans then. Even the Lord told him, oh man. Oh man. Hold on. First thing to chapter before I show you what I'm talking about. First Timothy chapter 4, I'll show you what I'm talking about. Let me finish this reading this first Timothy chapter 4, and I'm going to show you how the Lord condemned them. Let me read y'all this first Timothy chapter 4, or is it chapter 2 that I want? It's chapter 2. First, first Timothy chapter 2, verse 1, and then I'm going to show y'all why I thank the Lord. He's a brought son. Straight to my mind. You got a little bit more time. Give about 20 more minutes. He said, I exhort therefore that first of all, supplication, prayers, intercessions, and giving of thanks be made for all men. For kings, hold on, we say for kings and for all that are in authority that we may lead a quiet and peaceable life in all goodness and honesty. Oh, that's what all people told him to do in Jeremiah. It's not that what he said to do in Jeremiah 29 chapter, what we just heard. Anybody or am I talking to myself here? So that's what he said back to look at. We want to live around these people peaceably. The reason why the people ain't getting no peace, you sit back and look at it. Look at all the stuff that happened to black people. You know what I mentioned to you earlier? You seen that they put a arrest record up there, right? But y'all know what I said at 59 7. Hold on. Hold on, what you got? Go look at Isaiah 59 about. It's not Isaiah 59. It might be Isaiah 57. Isaiah 57, verse 20. Isaiah 57, verse 20. He said, but the wicked are like the troubled sea when it cannot rest. Then this man said, I met several persecution and we lay where we have no rest. He said, the wicked are like the troubled sea when it cannot rest, whose waters cast up mire and dirt. There is no peace. There is no rest. There is no peace, saith my God to the wicked. You're not going to get no peace. You're not going to get no rest. You know what I'm saying? You're not seeking, you're not seeking shalom. You're not seeking the rest. You're not seeking peace by obeying the Son and walking in Him. What makes you think God will give you peace with these wicked people? Ain't none of, look at that, as unfortunate as it is, Freddie Gray was not killed for Kodesh or righteousness sake. Eric Garner was it? That dude in North Carolina was it? Ain't none of these dudes got killed for the word. These dudes couldn't have lost a long coming. When this man said these people would come up, he said they would overcome the saints, not niggas. 
the saints. Not niggas, the saints. Nigga thinks you because you're an Israelite that make you a saint. I, I beg to differ. I beg to differ. You know what I'm saying? Come on back to the first Timothy chapter 2. And nigga can be mad at me all in one. God said what it's saying. We still hold the Jeremiah 29, Lamentation chapter 5, and Luke chapter 18. For kings, verse 2 of 1 Timothy chapter 2. For kings and for all that are in authority, that we may lead a quiet and peaceable life in all goodness and honesty. For this is good and acceptable in the sight of God our Savior, who will have all men to be saved and to come unto the knowledge of the truth. For there is one God and one mediator between God and men, the man, Messiah Yahshua, who gave himself a ransom for all to be testified in due time. I said, that's good and acceptable before God that you pray for these for, for the peace of the place where you at that you might get peace. He said that's acceptable. I'm gonna take that and tell you something, man. If you actually get wild real saints, people who actually serve God, they don't have any type of problems. You know what I'm saying? The type of stuff that the average black person in America deal with, they don't have to deal with. We wonder why. Troy I told me earlier, he said a woman made a video doing a lot of cussing. She said, where are you PK at? Where GMS at? Where are you IC at? You niggas out here every Saturday running your mouth. It's going down. We can't find you niggas nowhere. Because you would think, you think that would be the opportunity that you could call me. This would be the prime and perfect opportunity to actually go out there and preach the word to these people. So, I'm talking about... <laughs> But, but I'm, 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 I'm talking about the shit. I'm talking about real talk, though, in all seriousness, though. This is the opportunity where you might could be able to pull three, four years, because you're not going to win all the people out there. Because if you think you're a fool, if you think all the people want to hear this, you know what I'm saying? Because they really don't. Because then you're going to have to turn. Because the nigga's going to be saying, You need to tell me to God let the call me do this to us. Amos chapter 3, verse 1. So we, we still go back to Jeremiah 29. Yeah, he let him do it to us. Yeah, he let him do it. He told you in, in, in Psalm chapter 17, the wicked was his sword. Man said he don't bear a sword. He told you in Romans 13, they don't bear a sword in vain to punish the people. And that man said, be afraid of the sword, so that you might know there's a judgment. Thank y'all know, man, I done showed this to some of y'all before. Y'all just ain't no new to y'all. That's what they're out there for. You don't mind the maid and the pony got guns? What you think? They got guns for. He said they're not out here for saints. They're out here for evildoers. And you got to let somebody know, man, being an evildoer ain't got nothing to do with breaking man's law. Because it's y'all's law at first. And if you obey y'all's law, ain't no way you're going to break man's law. So if breaking man's law, you know you're breaking y'all's law. And if you're breaking y'all's law, you know one thing. You were the death. See, that's the thing the dudes got upset with when I kept them. That's the thing that nobody going to want to deal with. You were the death. See, it's easy to push that up under the rug. You know what I'm saying? Oh, man, no. Hey, I told this thing I'm down. I know the man ought to kill me a long time ago. And if he would have did it, what could I have said? He'd have been righteous. I'm the one wrong. How to say God wrong for executing judgment and I'm disobeying him? That makes a lot of sense, don't it? Amos 3 and 1. Hear this word that Yah has spoken against you, O children of Israel, against the whole family which I brought up from the land of Egypt, saying, You only have I known of all the families of the earth, therefore I will punish you for all your iniquities. I'm not sure if anyone can get off. I'm not sure if you can get off. I'm going to get them later. I'm trying to get your attention. You know what I'm talking about? I need to get your attention because I don't know these people. I know you know. Every last one of y'all probably didn't have your mama because you're black. I know your mama done probably told it to you or your daddy done told it to you. Some of you might have told it to your own kid. I don't care what Jimmy done doing. You my child. You know what I'm saying? I don't care. You my child. I don't, know, I don't care what the Europeans doing. I don't care what the Arabs doing. I don't care what the Asians doing. I, I, I care, but I don't care. You know what I'm talking about? I care what you doing. 
matter of fact, all of y'all old parents have probably told you, don't go around now hanging with such and such. They bad now. Your God told you the same thing. Don't go around and messing with the people that have you serving other gods now. I done told you. And what did you do? I don't want to be like them. Some of y'all have followed behind little boys or little girls. I ain't talking about just to be with them. But follow behind somebody because you want to try to do what they were doing. You want to be like them. Ended up getting yourself in a world of trouble. Come on back to Jeremiah chapter 29. We're in verse, verse 8 of Jeremiah 29. Listen what he tells you now. For thus saith God of hosts, the God of Israel, let not your prophets and your dividers that be in the midst of you deceive you, neither all into your dreams which you call to be dreamed. For they prophesy falsely unto you in my name, I have not sent them, saith Yah. For thus saith Yah, that after seven years be accomplished at Babylon, I will visit you, and perform my good words to you, and causing you to return to this place. So you know what he's telling you? All the niggas that telling you the fuck. You just thought you don't listen to them, didn't it? All the world just sent somebody to him. That means all the dudes that tell you about the book, the Lord just said, don't you listen to them, I ain't saw them. You know what I'm saying? That's what he just told you. Don't listen to them, I ain't saw them. He said, for, uh, for I know the thoughts that I think towards you, say of y'all, thoughts of peace and not of evil to give you an expected end. And you shall, uh, and then shall you call upon me, and you shall go and pray unto me, and I will hearken unto you. And you shall seek me and find me when you shall search for me with all your heart. And I will be found if you say of y'all, and I will turn away your captivity, and I will gather you from all the nations, from all the places where I have driven you, say of y'all, and I will bring you again into the place which I have caused you to be carried away captive. The only way this man going to get you from up around these people is you're going to have to come by, or you're going to carry his will. Please don't sit back and think he's waiting on all of us to come by, because he ain't waiting for you to come back. He's giving you space. See, hold on. Second Peter chapter 3. He's giving you space. He don't really want, he don't want nobody to perish now. But don't sit back and think he just going to, Second Peter chapter 3 verse 8. Don't sit back and think the Lord just died. I'm going to wait till, I'm going to wait till Kiana come by. And then I'll come back and save them all. When she returns, I'm going to come by. See, you know what? Hold on. I want to wait for everybody in Northern California, Southern Florida, Western Mississippi. When all of them were dead, they come by. That's when I'll come by. You know, niggas think that way. You got Israelites that think like that. But beloved, be not ignorant of this one thing that one day is with the Lord a thousand years. And a thousand years is one day. The Lord is not slack concerning his promise as some men count slackness, but is long suffering to us, Lord, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. It's not the Lord's desire for none of y'all to perish. He told you that in Ezekiel. He said, I have no pleasure in the death of him that died, but turn yourself and live. But don't think this man working on your clock. You know what I'm talking about? He working on his clock. All things got to be fulfilled in his due time. If you get on the gravy train, you get on it. You miss the boat. You miss the boat. I'm going to holler at you. It's simple as that. Jeremiah, uh, back to uh, 2 Chronicle chapter 7 and verse 14. Then we'll go back to Lamentation 5. And then I'm going to show you something. And then I'm going to let y'all go. And then I'm going to show you something. 2 Chronicles 7 and 14. If my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray and seek my faith and turn from their wicked ways, then I will heal from heaven, I will forgive their sin, and will heal their land. And now my eyes shall be open, and my ears attend unto the prayer that is made in this place. For now I have chosen and sanctified this house, that my name may be there forever, and my eyes and my heart shall be there perpetually. You know full well this ain't about Jerusalem. You know full well it ain't about Jerusalem. It's about the son. You know what I'm talking about? His eye, you done dealt with this before. 
He done took us all, he killed him, he set him apart, he chose him, he set him apart, he put his name in it. His heart is continually there. We got to go through all that. You understand know what I'm telling you? When you go through it now, then you can be heard. And then you can get some rest. We can be from up under you people persecution. Because the Lord already told you what to do to deal with these people. That when these people go to acting wild and stupid, he said, agree with your adversary. We done dealt with this before. While you in the way, that means comply. That goes for every last one of y'all, male or female. Even with your sons and daughters, cooperate, cooperate. Even when you seen them come and snatch the Lord, you did not see this man buck. He complied. Those are his adversaries. You know what I'm talking about? He didn't go back and forth with them. I'm going to just comply. We're going to look and see why he complied. But let's finish this Lamentation chapter 5. Matter of fact, let's just go on here and while I'm here to John chapter 18. We'll wait, we'll work around. Now remember what we just read, this man told you to oh, obey that means basically not to rebel, seek the peace of the city. Let's see if the Lord did that. Let's see if the Lord did that. He had five, John chapter 18, he had five times to rebel. Let's see if he followed his own words now. Oh my, my bad, I'm in Acts chapter 18. John 18. Verse 8. No, that's because the page is missing. I don't even know where it's at. Uh, you got both of them over there? Let's go. I'll give me a second. Page missing. That's why we had them technical difficulties there. Who is that, me? Is it somebody? No, I thought I heard that. It sounded like a human being. John 18 and 8. Make it 7. Then he asked them, then asked he them again, whom seek ye? And they said, Yahshua master. Yahshua answered, I have told you that I am he. If therefore you seek me, let these go their way. That the saying might be fulfilled which he spake of them, which thou gave me, have I loved none. Then Simon Peter, having a sword, drew it, and smote the high priest's servant, and cut off his right ear. The servant name was Malchus. Then said Yahshua unto Peter, Put up thy sword into the sheath. The cup which my father had given me, shall I not drink it? Then the band and the captain and the officers of the Jews took Yahshua and bound him, and led him away that night at first. For he was the father-in-law of Cassius, the high priest. Cassius, which was the high priest that same year. Now Cassius was he which gave counsel to the Jews that it was expedient that one man should die for the people. This man got snatched up. Peter pulled out his pistol and said, let's do it. That's what he just did, didn't he? And what did he tell him to do? Put it up. Put it up. He didn't buck. Let's see what else he told Pilate now. In verse 34, this same chapter, make it 33. Then Pilate entered into the judgment hall again and called Yahshua and said unto him, Art thou king of the Jews? Yahshua answered him, saying, Thou... Say thou this thing of thyself, or did others tell it of thee? Tell, tell it thee of me. Pilate answered, Am I a Jew? Thy own nation and chief priests have delivered thee unto me. What have thou done? Yahshua answered, My kingdom is not of this world. If my kingdom were of this world, then would my servants fight, that I should not be delivered to the Jews. But now is my kingdom not from hence. Your kingdom is not of this world, of this society, of this framework. Because this man said, my kingdom was, my, my soldiers were wrong. You know what I'm telling you? So if this is not your kingdom, this is not your kingdom. So we seeking a kingdom of come, a heavenly kingdom. See, come on, the Hebrew chapter 11. You got to know what you're seeking after. This man just said, my kingdom, my kingdom is not of this world. So what do you look like going up against a kingdom that's not of this world trying to overthrow it? And then when you overthrow it, what you going to do with it? You wicked as they are. You got the same heart they got. You want the same things they want. You desire the same things they do. You do the same things they do. Only difference is, I ain't going to say this, because a lot of black, black folks are Hebrews 11 and 13. A lot of black folks are pedophiles. A lot of black folks like to lay with animals. A lot of black folks just might not be into that satanic worship like the people into. 
You know what I'm talking about? Like really into it. Because you niggas real stupid if you think if, if you think them white folks letting them rappers and stuff really come around there when they doing what they really be doing. Why dumb you niggas here? You niggas think the Illuminati niggas they the Illuminati. Why them white folks really letting some niggas come see them do what they really do? But like I said, man, I seen a nigga today say a nigga say Freddie Freddie Gray was a blood sacrifice. Man, leave that stuff alone. Nigga go too far with that stuff, man. Nigga done made a couple videos on YouTube, nigga picked up the football and went to run it. When the people actually sacrifice some people, man, they not gonna let that be known. And some of the people who you think were blood sacrifices, they were just people who were expendable. So we gotta come up with a way to kill you. Some people, Michael Jackson was a blood sacrifice. No. Man, Michael Jackson was worth more money dead than alive. I gotta kill this nigga. Smell hold the whole on the whole beat of catalog. Ain't gonna let no black man ain't gonna let no black man live when you own all the beat of music. So you worth more dead than alive. Ain't no blood sacrifice. Got no need for you. Get you out of here. And to my old man, he legend was a blood man. Cry, let's just kill us a nigga. And you don't know, be knowing what some of these people be knowing, what they be involved. You know what I'm talking about? Maybe all Pimpsey was a blood sacrifice. No, Pimpsey just came out there when they talking about Dennis was homosexual and they killed him. You can't come out there talking about They show you in the movies all the time how they can kill people that make it look like something else. Man, but Pop got himself killed. How did Pop get himself killed? You you want you run me? You call them nigga, you call them nigga homosexuals? You call them Dre a, 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 a booty law? Dre messing with them rich white folks? You trying to organize black people? That get you out of here. Then at the same time, there's still niggas in the street that want to be dead too. If it wasn't not the petty jealousy. You know what I'm saying? Then all you got to take is you got the right situation going in where niggas don't really know what was going on with behind him getting killed to make an average dumb nigga from L.A. go kill Diggy. They don't know what they doing or what they're a part of. Man, these people don't use people who know what's going on. We'll use somebody who might know a little bit what's going on and manipulate somebody else to go do what I want you to go do. Because we got to cover up killing this nigga to cover up what we did on the first end. Because it wasn't no West Coast, East Coast, East fight. Then that was all media made. You know what I'm talking about? That was all media made. Look at what's ain't down over there. Let me get ask a little bit, but at the end of the day, you know what all of them had in common? All sinners ain't have no peace. That's what they all had. No matter how much you love, like niggas love to talk about DMA, niggas a sinner. You niggas get amped up because he got a song, God, give me a sign. He coming back to the world, he's still smoking and getting drunk. He's still cussing. Niggas still gonna do shows and rock his own records. They messing with him. They messing with him. And the people ain't messing with him, God messing with him, he messing with himself. You don't tell that, you don't mean you, you a hypocrite. If you're gonna serve God, you got to serve him. That means you can't be you can't be being messed no more. You gotta be all sinners. You know what I'm saying? You can't be smoking, you can't be smoking wounds no more. Gotta put the cocaine in the crack down. Gotta put the liquor down. Gotta keep your penis in your pants. When you when you ain't doing that, of course that, that man, I'm telling you, man, we done watch too many you done watch too many Illuminati videos, man. I told y'all too long time ago, that stuff make you lose your credibility. Oh, Chris Brown Cole, let me tell y'all something, man. When somebody wanna stop doing something, they're gonna stop doing something. They don't care if it costs them their life or not. One thing for certain, man, I say that with Pop. When Pop ran him out, he told the people how he felt. He knew the people were coming to kill him. He still did what he said. He still did what he felt like I got to do. I don't see the people. My mess was the same way. If they kill me, they're going to kill me. I still got to do what I got to do. See, so I'm going to tell you something. If, if X wore it out or Chris Brown wore it out like niggas think, then them niggas would do it. Them niggas don't want it out because they love for you stupid niggas to scream their name. They love the money they're making. They love the things they can go do. Y'all don't look at that. Don't be so stupid. 
We all niggas that this man can have sex with niggas say about he won't out from the the Illuminati, he won't out from there. But he's smashing holes, he's in a whole monger. And the only thing you looking at is he wanna escape from the Illuminati, but he's swinging his penis to anybody who will catch it. You'll see them niggas walking with a bottle of liquor, a bullet in their mouth, three holes on their arm. See the Illuminati messing with him, bro. See the Lord pray for that, bro. I ain't praying for this nigga. This nigga got three sins going on. What is on your face? And you would have a nerve to ask the living God to move on this man's behalf. You don't waste no prayer on this nigga. You know what I'm talking about? Look at him, man. I'm not praying for this nigga. I pray that nigga get buffed outside his head with a bomb. I bust that nigga up. Y'all got to stop just jumping for people because they black. Hebrews 11, 13. These all died in faith, not having received the promises, but seen, having seen them afar off, and were persuaded of them, and embraced them, and confessed that they were strangers and pilgrims on the earth. He sat back and told, he just sat back and told Pilate that my kingdom is not in this world. He said, look here, man, I'm a stranger in the pilgrim here. That man say, I'm a, he say, you are the earth. He said, you are below, I'm from above. He said, you are this world, I'm not of this world, I'm a stranger here. But I've been fully persuaded and embraced the promises which my father made to me. For they that say such things declare plainly that they seek a country. And truly, if they had been mindful of that country from whence they came out, they may have had opportunity to have returned. See, that's why you don't sit back and you look at that, why you're not coming up out of here. You actually don't desire the place where you left from, so ain't no way you're going to come back. A lot of our brothers and sisters don't want to go back to Jerusalem, and they don't want to do the thing necessary to get back there. He said, but now we desire a better country that is a heavenly. Wherefore, God is not ashamed to be called their God, for he hath prepared for them a city. You know, I have not seen, nor ear heard, nor came into the heart of man, which God hath prepared for those that love him. That means that you will seek the peace of this place while you're here. Come on to Lamentation chapter 5. You'll see it. Because come on, hold on. Let me read Matthew 27 one time before we leave here. Leave that down. Because I'm going to let y'all depart. Matthew 26, actually, by verse 51. Verse first 50. I told you, I said I can keep y'all all night tonight. We're going to keep it brief. We started a little sooner, and we're going to finish a little sooner. And Yahshua said unto him, Friend, wherefore art thou come? Then came they and laid hands on Yahshua and took him. And behold, one of them which were with Yahshua stretched out his hand and drew a sword and stroke a servant of the high priest and smote off his ear. Then said Yahshua unto him, Put up again thy sword in the place, for all they that take the sword shall perish with the sword. Think thou that I cannot now pray to my father, and he shall presently give me more than twelve legions of angels. But now then shall the scriptures be fulfilled that it thus must be. That's a man who humbled himself under what was going to happen instead of rebellion. So let me go on here and read it to you. He wrote Daniel chapter 12. He's still holding Luke 18 and Daniel 5. I mean, uh, Daniel chapter 12 and Lamentations, Jeremiah chapter 5. Daniel 12 and about verse 5. See, all this stuff that's going on, the Lord got it going on for this reason. Then I, Daniel, looked, and behold, there stood other two, the one on this side of the bank of the river and the other on that side of the bank of the river. And one said to the man clothed in linen, which was upon the waters of the river, How long shall it be to the end of these wonders? And I heard the man clothed in linen, which was upon the waters of the river, when he held up his right hand and his left hand under heaven, and swear by him that live forever, that it shall be for a time, times and a, and a half and when he have a, shall have accomplished to scatter the power of the Kodesh people all these things shall be finished see the purpose of all this stuff that happening is to help see right now you still think you got some power you know what I'm saying see you think you can still save yourself see that's what we were talking about a little bit on the Sabbath 
And Lord will, we'll come back to it. See, you think you you don't think you need a savior. See, what you most hear a nigga saying, while well, we waiting on Jesus, they waiting on y'all, she will your hollow shot. We need to do this here. See, that's a that's some false prophets. He told you don't listen to him. I ain't saw them. Because they telling you you don't need a savior. They telling you you can save yourself. And that's what they tell you. That's what they tell you now. Come on around here, look at uh Jane, Revelation 19 and 11. They tell you you don't need a savior after that second Thessalonians chapter 1. So they tell you you don't need no savior. They tell you you ain't got to do it. Hold on, first. First, uh, Revelation 18 and 23. Make it 21. Matter of fact, make it 19. Don't let the people sit back and tell you you need no savior. You can't say you did. When we came up out of Egypt, you had a savior. His name was Moses. If you read in the book of Judges, which I want to look at it tonight, the Lord will. We'll get to it soon. You had Gideon. You had Jephthah. You know what I'm saying? You had the left handed of You know what I'm saying? They led the people out. You know what I'm saying? Our people ain't never stood up. Even when you sit back and look at it, man. There was always a savior. I still want to look at it. You can go look at 2 Kings 13 and 5. He said when Israel was oppressed, he said he gave them a savior. We're going to get to it, Lord, will, but he said he gave them a savior. Even Nehemiah told you about it. You got that all these men were prototypes of the savior. You know what I'm saying? I'm telling you. The man said he got to be a prophet like under Moses. That means whoever delivered the people out of captivity, he got to be under Moses. But said last night, well, if there's a black Messiah out there, where he at? Ain't no black Messiah out there, man. The black Messiah sitting at the right hand of the Father. Ain't nobody, finna, ain't nobody living on this earth finna rise up and deliver his people. Because ain't no man on this earth that paid the price to purchase back that property. Y'all sure paid the price to buy that back. He got to come say that I bought it. It's mine. Papa told y'all to realize he paid for it, right? And then I'm coming back to get it. You ain't, how many of y'all gonna pay for something don't come back to get it? I done paid for it, I ain't coming back to get it. If not, I come back to get it when I'm ready to come back and get it. It just better be that when I get there. He said, they cast dust on their heads and cried, weeping and wailing, saying, alas, alas, that great city went in with me rich. All that had ships in the sea by reason of her costliness for in one hour she is made desolate. Rejoice over her, thou heaven, and ye codex apostles and prophets, for God hath avenged you on her. The vengeance is coming. It's coming. He saying a voice, and he saying a mighty angel took up a stone like a great millstone and cast it into the sea, saying, Thus, with violence. Shall that great city Babylon be thrown down and shall be found no more at all? Just don't sit back and look at this, you know, that Babylon is in the land man that we call all our right. Because truth be told, the whole world Babylon. The whole world. Y'all don't know the whole world is really ran by the same system? Don't you, know, don't you know the whole world is enemies of the living God? Don't you know the whole world is a land of graven images? It just ain't regulated to America. It's just not regulated to the Vatican. It just ain't regulated to the landmass where the area where Babylon actually is located. And I right. The whole world, Father. You look in America. America is the Babylonian system with a T. Not the landmass, the system. You sit back and look at it. What's the two biggest religions here? Catholicism and Islam, both Babylonian pagan sun worship. You know what I'm talking about? Guess what? You can't you, you can't go you can't go in no city in America and not see no great image. You can't go nowhere. You can pull up to the United States right now, they got an idol of Michael Jordan right in front of them. We can ride down south right now, man. Right down I got inside they come on the beach and see a and see an idol of Vince Carter right in front of your high school. You know what I'm saying? And these people worship this stuff. You got an owl overlooking Notre Dame University football field. They call it Touchdown Jesus. Huh? These people 
the heart is in the cemetery, is on the graves. Everywhere, everywhere, all of them serve this Babylonian pagan worship system. Everywhere. You look at all the buildings where all of them are, all of the Muslims, they all serve Babylon. No matter where they dwell. Even in Africa, a lot of Africans Muslims, they serve Babylon. They serve, and the reason why I say that, they serve Babylon's gods. That's what they're doing. That's what they're doing. Even when we sit back and we look at this place having the spirit of Egypt. Because this place don't really want to let us go. You know what I'm saying? And guess what's going to happen? The same way while we left about of Egypt, they're going to turn around and we leave about here, they're going to come for us and they're going to want to come and kill us. But they really don't want to let us go. They don't want to let us go now. You know why they don't want to let us go? We're going to lose some. We made a lot of money off these niggas. That's all the Egyptians care about. And our people don't have the same mind that they had leaving out of Egypt. I don't want to leave America. I like it there. I ain't got no room for time sneakers no more. Nigga say, what? No more bit. I can't stun on a nigga. I'm telling you now. No holiday, no KFC, no Papa Do, no none of that. They ain't ready for that. So the voice of the harpers and the musicians and the pipers and the trumpeters shall be heard no more at all in thee. And no craftsman or whatsoever craft he be, he shall be found any more in thee. And the sound of the millstone shall be heard no more at all in thee. And the light of the candle shall shine no more at all in thee. And the voice of the bridegroom and of the bride shall be no more, no more at all in thee. For thy merchants were great men of the earth, for by thy sorceries were all nations deceived. By your rebellion is everybody lied to. Now when we sit back and we look at all the nations of the earth, who teach more rebellion than this God for second place? Every land on the earth don't teach you can serve any God you want to. Where is law? Let's just be honest now. You look at every country on the face of the earth. Every country don't have you can serve any God you want. But maybe you can serve any God you want. They tell you faggots can get married here. A lot of sorceries they can see on the earth with. But wait till they get later on in the game and you'll see how more and more this stuff, how more and more despicable this place gonna get. This is truly the most wicked place on the face of the earth in my personal opinion. I haven't dwelt in any other place, but by the policies that they enact and the things that she stamped, compared to these, I'm talking about openly. Because we don't know what these other countries doing by, with the door closed. I'm talking about openly. This got to be the most wicked place on the face of the planet. Hands down. Hands down. That's why we have to walk in peace to get peace. We not gonna get peace. You're not going to get peace from an unpeaceful person. So that means it, it just all means it don't even fool with them. And he's saying, huh, was found the blood of the prophets and of saints and of all that was slain upon the earth. Now we just sit back and look at it. You see how he broke it down? He said prophets, saints, and then everybody. So guess what? Even the sinners, even the sinners who been killed over here, man, of these people, boy, that blood crying out. He hear it. He hear it. I seen what you did, little buddy. He said, you further the affliction. He said, I'm displeased with the heathen. You push the affliction a little further. Even that's got to deal with the Lord, but that's another time for another day. He said, I'm displeased with you because you pushed it further. See, you spoke to that, my people, in captivity, but you, wouldn't, you didn't have to break my people's spine. You know what I'm saying? You don't even have to beat them senses like that. You don't even have to choke this man out. You don't even have to shoot this man in the back and he said, I can't breathe, F your breath. He said, I seen that, that sort of did please me. I'm gonna see you guys soon though. Cause you know Revelation 19 and 11, that man said this man coming back called faithful and true and he coming to judge and made war. I'm gonna come see you about that little buddy. 
Luke chapter 18, so I can let y'all go. Then Lamentation chapter 5. He said, surely a uh, person make a wise man mad. You got to have enough sense to know the Lord of heaven sitting in heaven like this. I see what they're doing to my people. I'm going to come see him. Let's see what the Lord said. This is why the man said you should always pray and not to faint. Let's see why. And he spake a parable unto them to this end that men ought always to pray and not to faint. Saying there was a city in a city of judge which feared not God, neither regarded man. And there was a widow in that city, and she came unto him, saying, Avenge me of my adversary. And he would not for a while, but afterwards he said within himself, Though I fear not God, nor regard man, yet because this widow troubled me, I will avenge her, lest by her continual coming she weary me. And the Lord said, Hear what the unjust judge said. Shall not God avenge his own elect, which cry day and night unto him, though he bear long with them? I tell you that he will avenge them speedily. Nevertheless, when the Son of Man come, shall he find faith on the earth. Do anybody know where this go back into the law where he would get this from? Do anybody know where in the law the Lord got this from? Anybody want to take a stab at it? Anybody want to take a stab at it? He said there was a woman that continually cried unto him, and though he bare long with him. Come on around here. Genesis chapter 15. I guess I'll go around here to show you this. Try to make it quick. Genesis 15 and 12. And when the sun was gone down, a deep sleep fell upon Abram, and lo, a horror of great darkness fell upon him. And he said unto Abram, Lo, of a surety that thy seed shall be a stranger in a land that is not there, and they shall serve them, and they shall afflict them four hundred years. And also that nation whom they shall serve will I judge, and afterwards they shall come out with great substance. So let's go around here to Exodus chapter 2. Exodus chapter 2, verse 23. And it came to pass in the process of time that the king of Egypt died, and the children of Israel sighed by reason of the bondage, and they cried, and their cry came up unto God by reason of the bondage. So that means they cried in their day and night, they didn't. And God heard their groaning, and God remembered his covenant with Abraham, with Isaac, and with Jacob. And God looked upon the children of Israel and had respect unto them. So that means he heard they cry. So let's look at Exodus chapter 3 and verse 9. Now therefore, behold, the cry of the children of Israel has come unto me, and I have also seen the oppression wherewith the Egyptians oppressed them. Come now therefore, and I will send thee unto Pharaoh, that thou may bring forth my people, the children of Israel, out of Egypt. Oh, so that means he came, he gonna come and deliver him in the future. Well, let's sit back and let's see what he said here in the, in the sixth chapter then. Oh, is it the fifth chapter that I like? Hebrew 5. Not, pardon me. Exodus 6 and verse 6. Make it 5. I'll start at 1. And then y'all said unto Moses, now that thou see what I will do to Pharaoh, for with a strong hand shall he let them go, and with a strong hand shall he drive them out of his land. And God spake unto Moses and said unto him, I am Yah. And I appeared unto Abraham, unto Isaac, and unto Jacob, by the name of God Almighty. But by my name Yah was I not known to them. I have also established my covenant with them to give them the land of Canaan, the land of their pilgrimage, wherein they were strangers. And I have also heard the groaning of the children of Israel, whom the Egyptians keep in bondage, and I have remembered my covenant. Wherefore say unto the children of Israel, I am Yah, and I will bring you out from the burdens of the Egyptians under the neck of your persecution, and I will rid you out of their bondage, and I will redeem you, and with a stretched out arm, and with great judgment. So from the labor where you got no rest, I'm a give it to you. And I will take you to me for a people, and I will be to you a God, and you shall know that I am Yah your God, which bring you out from under the burdens of the Egyptians. So he, they cried unto him day and night, and he bare along with it, because let's see how long he was there. Exodus 12 and verse 40. Let's just see how long he was there. Now, if 
the sojourning of the children of Israel who dwelt in Egypt was 430 years. And it came to pass at the end of 430 years, even the self same day, it came to pass that all the hosts of Yah went out from the land of Egypt. So it sounded like while he cried unto him, even though he bare longer, that he against them speaking, did he not draw all the Pharaoh's army in the sea? Where do you think the Lord got that from? He said that when the Son of Man come, will he find faith on the earth? When he took them out of Egypt, did he find faith among his people? They were rebellious and unbelieving. Even though he avenged them of their adversary. Where do you think he got that trouble from? Because if the people were crying in the yard, that means they were coming. Oh, man. Lamentations, Jeremiah chapter 5. Y'all see how that goes together? Even if you don't, thank the Lord. I guess don't nobody see how it goes together. You see? So Lamentation 5 and 5. Don't y'all see that? Little, little, little. It's the same thing going by to e e Egypt. Our necks were under persecution. We labored. We didn't have no rest. We sit back and look at it spiritually. Our necks are under persecution. We labored. We didn't have no rest. Now we look at it naturally again. We're in the same position we was in Egypt in a long captivity. Our necks are under persecution. We labored. We don't have no rest. That's why he told you men are always to pray and not to faint. Our necks are under persecution. We labor and have no rest. We have got given, we have given the hand, we have given the hand to the Egyptians and to the Assyrians to be satisfied with bread. Our fathers have sinned and are not, and we have borne their iniquities. Servants have ruled over us, and there is none that deliver us out of their hand. That's why your pe that's why our people doing what they doing and in, 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 in. that's why they did what they did in Ferguson. That's why they did what they're doing in Baltimore. That's why they're doing what they're doing in Baltimore. That's why niggas get amped because servants are ruling over us. The video 25 told you that these people are supposed to be our servants. Yet they ruling over us and there's nobody to save us out of their hand. And we sit back looking at I don't know nothing about that Jesus. He ain't coming. I just got to do it ourselves. And you still ain't getting the result you're seeking after. Because you ought to turn your heart and mind back to your God and serve Him and cry unto Him and pray without ceasing. Because the man say, I'll avenge you speedily. He said, but nevertheless, will there be faith on the earth when the Son of Man returns? That's good right there. Thank you, Lord. Y'all understood all this stuff this evening? Praise ye, y'all, for y'all sure. That's, that's good right there.